Hey everyone, this is Jordan, and I am here with a Monday morning devotional, uh, and uh, just uh, wanted to encourage all of you, uh, coming out of yesterday's service, I, I really uh, hope you were uh, aware and paying attention to the move of the Spirit. Uh, as I asked in the service yesterday, I think it's really appropriate for us to continue to press in, uh, to continue to desire, to continue to ask uh, for more of God's presence in our gatherings and in our lives. Um, and I would just encourage you uh, to step up and step out, step into the role that God has called uh, you into in this church gathering um, and in this church family. Uh, we have a, a great need uh, for each of us to uh, own the gifting and own the responsibility that comes with that gifting uh, from God the Father. Uh, our gifts are, are for building up and for encouraging and for uh, just uh, uh, being uh, participants in the breakthroughs that God has uh, so that people um, inside of our church and outside of it uh, are made aware that uh, God is with us. We are God's people. Um, and I just pray that uh, we would pursue that um, as, as we continue to grow together. Um, let's pray. We'll jump into today's devotional. We're going to continue with uh, the Bible's biggest failures. Uh, we're going to turn to Joshua 2 uh, uh, for our, uh, our talk and conversation today. Excuse me, Judges 2 uh, for our talk and conversation today. So let's pray uh, and we'll get going. Uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you that uh, we have your power with us. We thank you that uh, you send uh, the helper uh, to be with us and that the Holy Spirit is uh, with us and that he helps unlock your truth. He helps uh, make scripture alive for us. He helps minister uh, to us. He uh, helps us be more effective in ministering to others. Uh, God, I just pray that um, uh, we would be uh, eager for more uh, and we would be hungry for more. We would depend on you more, Lord, that uh, we'd be vulnerable uh, in the world's perception um, only so that uh, your power can be shown. In your almighty name, Jesus, we thank you. Amen. All right, so we're going to uh, Judges 2. And we're continuing with the story of uh, some of the uh, Bible's biggest failures. Uh, we're going to stick with the Israelites again. I'm not picking on uh, this uh, people. Um, they are the people of God, the chosen people of God. Uh, and so in a lot of ways, uh, their failings should be enlightening for us. They should help us uh, in our walk with God. Uh, they should help us uh, pursue God in a way that is um, uh, more true and more faithful. So... I want to challenge us with uh, this story from Judges 2. Uh, if you go to Judges 2, 1. Uh, now the angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochim, and he said, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you into the land that I swore to give to your fathers. I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. What is this that you have done? So now I say, I will not drive them out before you, but they shall become thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare to you. As soon as the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the people of Israel, the people lifted up their voices and wept, and they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. Now, uh, this again is a, a story we'll actually see repeated, uh, much like the Exodus Israelites, a lot of their same uh, failings or same uh, shortcomings, the same mistakes, the same decisions that they made uh, uh, kind of show up repeatedly. Uh, this uh, sort of a behavior from the, the people of Israel uh, continues to persist really throughout their history. Um, the story goes and the history goes that um, God had called them into this promised land that was occupied. Uh, it had these uh, amazing cities, vineyards, farmlands that had been planted and, and taken care of by prior uh, residents. And God tasked the Israelites uh, to continue to push on and to attack until the land was fully cleared uh, of these prior inhabitants and to make sure that uh, none of them persisted. And God had warned them that, hey, this is a problem. If you allow them to stay, they're going to become a snare, a trap uh, for you um, if you allow them to coexist in this land that I've given to you specifically. Um, and the people of Israel, they, they make good progress uh, under Joshua's leadership and under the uh, elders of the nation who followed him. Uh, they, they make good progress. But uh, as the campaign grows long, 
uh, they seem to grow tired or complacent or comfortable um, with their fight against uh, these inhabitants, these, these uh, existing peoples in the land. And so in uh, Judges chapter 1, it talks about how, uh, uh, and, uh, how these people settled alongside the Israelites or how the Israelites settled alongside of them. And, and for each of the tribes, there seems to be cities and places and areas where uh, these inhabitants continue to live with their gods and coexist. The, the people of God um, accommodate and coexist and, and find a, a, a comfort uh, with these people near them and in their cities. Now, this uh, ends up becoming a problem. We see judges sort of really unpack this. And this is a problem that then persists. Like this is uh, a, a bit of rot and a bit of poison and a bit of illness that uh, persists throughout the nation of Israel's history. Um, and we see this time and time again brought up as a, a, a issue that uh, they face. And so what, what ends up happening is they get comfortable and they get complacent around these people. Uh, and then in that comfort and that complacency, uh, they begin to be drawn off to worship at the altars to these foreign gods. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about that coming through uh, uh, sexual temptation, uh, through uh, people luring other people into relationships, sexual relationships. Uh, and then it talks about some of this uh, having to do with money and some of this having to do with power dynamics uh, and authority in the area. Sometimes this has something to do with uh, the influence of spirits, uh, evil spirits in the land. And so we just see all these different things kind of coming into play. But really the key point is that uh, God called the people of Israel to really uh, establish a holy land, a land that was free of these altars and these idols and these foreign gods by pushing consistently and continuing to pursue uh, until there was no more of these original inhabitants left in the land, and it was just left and retained for the people of Israel. Um, and because they didn't do that, uh, we see this stumbling block time and time and time again um, undercut the, the growth and the health uh, of this people of Israel. Now, again, my big point in talking about these big failures is that uh, they're not there just for us to, to smirk at and to belittle um, as a result of having heard these stories for uh, decades inside of Sunday school. These are lessons for us. This is God's people, the people he chose. If we're a Christian, we, we have been adopted into this family. And so we need to be really mindful of the lessons that are taught here because they could be lessons and are lessons for us. And so for you, um, I would uh, kind of highlight a few different things. Uh, we don't have a physical promised land any longer. Uh, we are, are not called to go and conquer Canaan. Uh, we don't uh, have that as a part of, of, of God's purposing for our lives. But we are a people who are called to holy lives. We are a people who are called to take the power and the authority of God and the promises of God over our lives and the strength that God provides us and to move forward and to continue uh, to pursue, to push out the inhabitants uh, of this new life that God has given us. Uh, and I think specifically, I would challenge you. Many of us, we, we have uh, come to faith in saving faith in Jesus Christ. We've seen the work of the Holy Spirit. And we've gotten comfortable and complacent with the level of holiness uh, that we've reached. Uh, we have some existing remnants of our former flesh and sin uh, around us. It can be friends, uh, it can be hobbies, it can be forms of entertainment, uh, it can be uh, things that we allow our thought lives to turn to. Uh, sometimes it's just outright sin uh, that we continue to persist in, but it's a smaller sin than what we had before. And what I would warn you of with this uh, failing of the Israelites is that that can easily become us. The nature of sin is that it is something that wants to grow. I talked earlier about how uh, if we can feed uh, the fruit of the Spirit, if we can feed the tree of life uh, that's in, inside of us as a result of the work of Jesus Christ uh, through where we put our attentions and our energies, then certainly when we give time and attention and energy to sin, uh, it grows and it becomes uh, something that has more influence and power in our lives and can diminish our opportunity to minister and to serve God and to enjoy all that he has for us. And so uh, that is my challenge for you today. Um, and it may be a question for you to consider. Um, what are those places of complacency in your life um, that you have become comfortable with not fully pursuing holiness? 
What are the strongholds that remain, the things that you continue to struggle in your walk and in your pursuit of holiness? Again, holiness is about being like God, and that's that's something that is put in, in all of our hearts as Christians that, to desire. It's not about the law. It's about, I want to be more like God, um, and uh, I want to be a better reflection of God. And so what are those things, those strongholds where you perhaps have tried yourself against the wall of that fortified city. You've tried to tear it down, but you haven't made the progress that you're looking for. And so you've grown complacent around it and you've allowed it to exist. Um, I, I, my challenge to you is to, to, to renew the assault on the enemy and on the strongholds and on the places of complacency and comfort where you've allowed sin to exist. Do that through prayer. Do that through uh, an open-handed pursuit of God's help in that uh, situation. Don't limit the opportunity of God to work in that situation uh, through uh, withdrawing uh, from uh, the gathering of, of believers that we have in our church. The, the Bible resources us in so many ways. Sometimes there is supernatural invention or intervention through the Holy Spirit, which we love. Uh, we saw some of that yesterday morning. Uh, uh, but uh, we also see that through the people that God invests in our lives and puts around us. The, the tribe of Israel, or the tribes of Israel, there's 12 of them, and they were all supposed to work together to make sure that this land was fully conquered, and that didn't happen. Uh, they each found their own land and found comfort there, and as a result, all of them were weaker because they never pursued that. So don't uh, 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 withdraw from the, the, the resourcing that God gives you as part of this church uh, over these places of complacency or strength where you feel like you haven't um, had overcoming and you haven't had success in, in uh, your struggle. So that's my challenge for you this morning. Um, please uh, do find someone in our gathering. Uh, you can certainly reach out to your, your elder team. We have a lot of wonderful people um, who have, have walked uh, uh, difficult journeys and struggled with many of the same things that you have, who would love to pray with you and would love to counsel you and offer you wisdom and uh, just give you hope um, because they've been able to walk and pursue and see God uh, uh, be uh, before them um, in, these, in these fights. So uh, that's my, my challenge for you this morning. I hope that's encouraging. Uh, I really am looking forward to our gathering this coming Sunday. Uh, and I uh, hope to, to really be able to connect with all of you um, and see uh, you step into the gifts that God has given you and see how our church flourishes when that happens. I uh, love you all. Bye.